day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I've got a really quick little information video for you today. Today we're going back to basics. We're going back to the start where we first print out our pattern templates, our cutting and our layout and so many hints and tips along the way. It's very important our very first steps in making anything in three-dimensional sewing and I think this one's really going to help you out. And I feel like I should have made this video for you earlier. Never mind, I'm sharing it with you today. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump right in. So let's start at the very beginning, the very, which is the very best place to start. And, and that is where we're printing out our templates. Now, when you're printing out any of my templates, I recommend that you check your settings on your printer and that you set it to print at actual size. There is a setting that says actual size because sometimes different printers, when you put something in to be printed, it, it likes to resize it for you. So check that it's printing at actual size and you'll, you'll see that those pattern templates will come out just right. Also, I've started putting in a little, um, a little guide, a little measuring guide for you so you can check your, whether it be inches or centimeters, you can check that it has printed out exactly right because that's very important. Now, when you go, do go to print out your templates, my best advice is that you don't print on paper, but you print on something like a lightweight uh, cardboard. What I've got here is actually a quill board, and it's about 210 GSM. Something about 200 GSM is really good. It'll run through the printer easily. And what that means is you print your templates straight out onto that, and then you cut them straight out of, of that sheet and that it's strong enough for you to trace around. So you're not having to transfer from paper and then onto cardboard and then onto your fabric. Now every time that we retrace, we're, we're increasing the variables. So we're just distorting that little pattern piece just a little bit more every time we change it. So if you can do that, give it a try with your printer. That's really helpful. That's how I print out all of my patterns. And I actually use the quill board for my pattern templates for my own use. I find it's quite strong enough. And if you're using the right pens, um, then you'll be fine tracing around that one. So our very next step, of course, once we've cut out, now when you do cut out your, your little pattern templates, what we can get away with in dressmaking um, where we can cut out our, around our little shape or our pattern piece and you know it's a little bit of a quarter inch out here and there. When we're making little 3D which is most of my sewing, most of my projects are sort of three dimensional little things and you just can't get away with those little discrepancies. We really need everything to be really exact. So make sure this is the foundation of your finish project. Um, never disregard these beginning steps because they are so very important. So when you cut out your cardboard templates, make sure that you are cutting out exactly on that line and make sure that all of your little, um, you'll, you'll see actually it will print out. I always have every, everything on there for you. So our next step is then to move on to where we're actually tracing it out onto our fabric to use. Now, in, I know that in dressmaking, it's, it's standard and a lot of sewers take their little paper template and they will often pin that to the fabric and then cut around the pattern piece. Again, that's fine when you're making something bigger and you've got a lot more leeway. You're not adding filling to it, so, so it's really fine. But this particular type of sewing has its own special set of rules and it really will guarantee you success in the end if you follow them. So we don't pin because it's just, you know, if you put a little pin in there and you try and cut around there, those couple of millimetres that it may be out will make all the difference. It'll change, you know, it'll absolutely make the difference between, for example, little mannequin having nice tight little shoulders um, and, and a nice, you know, clean little neckline there, it will just change those shapes just a little, but on a little project, that's a lot. So 
this is the way that we do it so I have I use a fine marker you can use a laundry marker if you like but it needs to be fine the finest one you have this is a permanent marker just a standard permanent marker and it's I'm cutting exactly on that line so we won't see this line anyway so I've just got interfaced felt here just to show you a sample now I've got a little teddy bear's arm and I'm just going to place that on there you'll also notice with some of my pattern pieces, I have a little mark in the little arrow that says grain line. Now grain line is the way that the fabric is woven. And if you line it up with your selvage on your fabric, felt doesn't have a grain line, but we interface it. And we interface it with a woven interfacing. So our interfacing has a grain line. That's that's where it's strongest and if you have a scrap of fabric and you think oh well you know I don't know where the selvage was it's a simple matter of giving it a little tug tug it this way and then tug it that way and you'll find that tugging on the grain line it's got hardly any give at all it's very very stable across and you can see there's some stretch there so it means that this is our grain line running this way so when we were putting that one on there we would line it up with the grain line so it's just as simple as that so remember when we're interfacing our fabric we also have to watch that we have our fabric and the grain line running the right way now the way that I do this is simply that I trace exactly around my little pattern piece right on that edge So there's absolutely no room for mistake and I have my little markings there for my opening so I just extend those little markings out like that and then I can just add them in again this is behind the, the fabric so you won't see those little marks but you need them to be there now when you have a pattern piece that says this one is an inner arm and it says cut to one reversed what that means is simply just the way it sounds we cut one this way then we flip the pattern piece and we trace around and we cut one that way and again we put in our little markings so we trace right around that one just the same and I think for some sewers who aren't used to just drawing directly on their fabric they might think gosh this is really this is a bit full on but it's just a completely you have to remember it's a completely different type of sewing what we're doing here very exact sort of sewing so there we have we've got our two little arm pieces and when I cut them out I will cut those out absolutely on that line so that they'll exactly match up again we've got a little head gusset here a little head gusset is the little piece that we sew in here on a little animal very important that that one is nice and straight and again we've got a grain line if we were to put this piece across here and cut it on a diagonal because oh you know what we had that we had just that little bit of room left on our piece of fabric felt well what will happen is that's cut on the cut on the bias and when we, we might sew it in all okay but when we go to stuff that little head the whole thing will twist and distort and there's nothing more frustrating when you've been you know you've sewn it so carefully but we really can't fight just the absolute rules that just happened so we work with them so there's our little head gusset exactly the same line that one up around remember that your markings are so very important if I've put them on there they're important and they help you sew your pattern and they make it easy for you so there we go and again I just extend that little mark there we have a side head here little side head piece that's a side head cut to one reversed there's our little grain line we'll draw around that one we want one reversed so we'll flip that one and cut that one out too now as far as cutting out goes of course we're talking scissors now 
Now, maybe I could be a bit of a scissors snob. I don't like cheap scissors. I think they're a waste of money. Um, and I'm certainly, I'm the last person to be spending money on tools that we don't need. I'm never going to recommend to you that you just go out and purchase things just willy-nilly. Um, I think that your money is well spent on a good pair of scissors. Now, when I say a good pair of scissors, this is a, this is a pair of scissors that's probably, from memory, around about $16, $17. So not by any means expensive but it's certainly not at the lower budget end and they're just not worth it. They don't cut well. And I find that I have a nice, uh, not a really heavy weight pair, this size, and then I have the small size. We definitely need a little small pair that have a sharp little tip. There's lots of little areas that we want to get into and and snip so i really that's what i use all the time and you know what when they get a little bit past it i just go and buy new ones i don't get them sharpened i've got a beautiful pair of um old singer beautiful stainless steel shears and you know what i never take them out the box i just like them they're pretty and i just like them but these are the ones that i use so for cutting out little tips on cutting out and that is we don't cut out like this you might think this is oh this is good it's going to get me around the corners nicely no it's going to leave you little jagged edges so wherever possible we do long strokes with our scissors right up into the axis and follow that little line around and you'll get a much smoother finish I'm using the full length of that blade every time. Especially on those curves. And we just follow those little curves around. And it's actually much quicker to cut out that way. And you can see I'm staying exactly on that line. I'm not cutting either side of it, just right on that line. And your pattern piece ends up that lovely smooth finish and of course if the pattern piece edge is nice and smooth our sewing line is more likely to be nice and smooth so there's our little pattern piece beautifully smooth just as this one will be and it's all worth the time and I have to say I would have to say that cutting out is probably my least enjoyable part of the whole process of making anything I don't know if you're all like that but I am it's probably because I'm terribly impatient and I'm always excited to get to the good bits but so if I can learn to take my time um, I'm, I'm sure you all can too And just it, if you just could understand how much it helps you in your sewing when your basic foundations are set well, everything about your project will be easier. And really for me, the sewing experience, if it's not enjoyable, it's just, I'm just throwing it across the room. Like seriously, it's got to be an enjoyable experience. And, um, and if I set this groundwork right, it always is. There are no surprises along the way. I don't like surprises. <laughs> I'm a very planned person. So you can see that I've got those two little arm pieces now and when I put them together, you can see that my little marks match up beautifully. So my little openings will also be true. So it's really worth it. So there, that's, our, that's our cutting out. We've talked about grain lines and we've talked about um, reversing. The other thing that I will recommend at this point is that whenever you are cutting out your patterns and you have like these two little arm pieces here, obviously on a lot of my patterns there's a lot of little openings and that sort of thing. When we've got an opening we're going to close and we're using fabric on 
When we're working with fur, we use a special bonding glue, well I do, that treats those edges. But whenever you're making anything of mine and it's got a little opening, I recommend that you go ahead and you sew a tight little zigzag. If you've made some of my patterns before, you probably will have seen me do this. You sew a tight little zigzag across that opening, just inside the four millimeter seam allowance. And that will keep those little openings nice and true. It stops them from stretching and it gives you, um, it's much easier to close that opening with a ladder stitch when it's got a nice solid little zigzag. It's almost a satin stitch, it's so close. So that's it, those are the tips. That's the way to get absolutely beautiful clean lines and little sharp finishes. Your shapes will stay all true. It's worth it every time. I really hope that this one helps you. If you've been cutting out a different way and not had a lot of success or had some variables in your work, that might be, that might be why. So get yourself some cardboard, little fine marker, and that's the way we do it. And you'll probably find, once you've done it a couple of times, you'll think, oh my goodness, this is so easy. This is so much easier than pinning. It's so much easier than pinning. So I hope this really helps you all out. Thanks for watching. Well, thank you all for watching today. I hope that you've gained some really good little tips and I hope that it has inspired confidence in you. It's nothing like starting a new little project and feeling very confident that it's all going to come together. If your base work is done, you can be assured that you'll have great success. So if you have enjoyed this video, you can give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beautiful. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can do that because you can get some sneaky peeks at the up and coming projects and I'm designing at the moment and it's very exciting because there's some really sweet little things coming up that I'm pretty sure you're all going to love. And so make sure that you do subscribe. You don't want to miss any of those free patterns and there's a lot coming your way. Now I have to get back to the drawing table and keep working on those patterns. So looking forward to seeing you all next time. Make sure everything good that comes your way, make sure that you pay it forward because we all can. Till next time, it's Huru from me.